one of the Dark Horse favorite big finish sets that I've been getting into over the past uh, like year, where I've really been listening to big finish on a regular basis and catching up with the, the more current releases, has been the Third Doctor Adventures. And that really did surprise me, because the Third Doctor is a Doctor that I love. I, I love all of the Doctors, and John Pertwee is an absolute mad lad in the role, of course, like just basically playing a, a, a hyper-stylized version of himself with all the vehicles and the clothing and the capes and working with the beautiful women, of course. He was the he was the James Bond incarnation of the Doctor. But it's, a, it's an incarnation of the Doctor that never quite resonated with me fully, which is why I was so surprised that uh, Tim Treylor's uh, impressionist incarnation for Big Finish really struck a chord with me. He's had some really great stories over the past uh, year. Like the, the, it was the the, uh, the Third Doctor Adventures Volume 7 and Volume 8 last year, uh, with the Unzal Incursion and the Devil's Hoof Prince, some of my favourite releases over the past year for Big Finish, particularly the Devil's Hoof Prince, which is like one of the best Third Doctor stories that we never properly got and now with uh, the big finish classic doctors range having a bit of a revamp in 2022 they've started the third doctor adventures range in 2022 with a pretty big third doctor gambit not only is this a behemoth seven part story which is uh, similar to the silurians and to inferno those epic like season seven seven part stories which honestly i love doctor who but if you're more than four episodes long, you really have to justify that that length. And I don't. I think even the best stories of um, of the classic series really don't justify being more than four episodes long, with the exception of like Genesis of the Daleks or Power of the Daleks. But for the Annihilators, we've got an epic seven part story. But not only that, not only do we have Daisy Ashford as Liz Shaw, not only do we have John Coleshaw as the Brigadier, but we're bringing in Michael Troughton, who's uh, making his debut, his big finish debut here as the second doctor and also fraser hines however you may notice in the artwork here that fraser hines jamie mccrimmon has been aged up somewhat and not only is this a seven part epic adventure in the vein of the uh, third doctor season seven but this is like an almost a backdoor pilot for an upcoming range of second doctor stories with michael trouton and fraser hines called beyond war games and there's a reason that we are not privy to yet, which is going to be revealed in 2022 and 2023, according to the behind-the-scenes stuff, according to Nicholas Briggs talking on the behind-the-scenes for the Annihilators, um, the last disc, basically, the behind-the-scenes bonus features. There is a reason why Fraser Hines' Jamie has been aged up. There's a reason why they are talking about doing missions for the Time Lords, basically, and there is a reason why they are here. But what is happening in the Annihilators? Basically, it is, um, it is a unit adventure in the 1970s, or maybe it's the 1980s, where there's something happening at Lou Gate Dock, some weird, sticky, horrible, uh, foul-smelling green odour in the north of England, and it's up to the Doctor, the third Doctor, Liz, Unit and the Brigadier to investigate, but there's apparently some sort of two-pronged invasion happening at the moment. Uh, it's a little bit simplistic, it's sort of like akin to what you'd get in Galaxy 4 in the 1960s, when it's like, oh, we have the, the more humanistic villains, and we also have the horrible, ugly, smelly, foul, green blobby villains which are really the bad guys here uh it's 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 kind of well worn well trodden doctor who in terms of like the 1960s and the 1970s which uh, of course like the the faithfulness to that sort of story structure and that sort of approach is one reason why these box sets have been so good in the past but let's play a clip from the annihilators uh which is a you don't get many face-to-face -face encounters with three and two in this box set, but this is a clip where they are both adjacent to each other. You'll see what I mean in a moment. I'm going to supervise the search for this slime creature base. Look, don't you understand? We have to find the doctor. But my dear fella, I'm here. Not you. The one I came here with. Those slime creatures somehow took him. There was a flash and... Flash? Aye, flash of light. Could have been the transmat beam. Just what I was thinking. Transmat? Oh, like T-mat. You mean that thing they had on the moon when the ice warriors were exactly trying Exactly to... like that, Jamie. And you said the transmat beam operated from somewhere near here? Yes. Which means doctors in the slime creature's lair. So, I'm coming with you, Brigadier. Oh-ho! <laughs> now you're in trouble. You've got a hairy-legged Highlander on your trail. <laughs> your words mean nothing to me, and I will answer no more of your questions. It is time for you to tell us who you are and what you are doing on this planet. Ah, 
Is it? That was another question. Oh, was it? Yes, and that was another. Um, well, what will you do to me if I don't answer? Stop asking questions. Oh, you'll stop asking questions if I don't answer. No, I wish you to answer my questions. Oh, I see. Uh, in the chat, um, Eskig says, Oh man, Fraser's voice has aged. I haven't heard uh, his voice in these. Um, he is actually playing an older version of Jamie. And he also does the younger Jamie voice in the behind the scenes. He he says that because he's older, he can do the deeper version. He is able to do the younger Jamie. He's able to make his voice a little bit higher. He's able to pull it off. But the older Jamie is a deliberate tease for an upcoming future Second Doctor series of adventures. So yeah, that, that he's able to be more natural. That's not an issue with the performance in this. But as you heard there, Michael Troughton, like, as someone who has been watching and listening to a lot of Second Doctor stuff recently, like Evil of the Daleks, Faceless Ones, a few others like from that era as well, I think Michael Troughton did an incredible job. This is a terrific debut for him. He captures Troughton so well, so much fun. Yeah, he's great. But this is, I think Council of Geeks also did a video on this as well, talking about the eth the efficacy of um, the, the sort of impressionistic uh, cast of characters, where you've got this whole main cast, but the only surviving cast member is Fraser Hines, where you've got Michael Troughton instead of Patrick Troughton, you've got Tim Traylor instead of John Pertwee, you've got John Coleshaw uh, instead of Nicholas Courtney, of course. Like The, the, the list goes on for, for Big Finish uh, doing this, this sort of like legacy expanded media for these impressionists. Um, and Daisy Ashford as Liz Shaw, who's the daughter of Caroline John. I think that they do a great job, of course. I think that they're the entire cast are great. And I, someone in the chat as well saying that they don't think that uh, the Brigadier sounded good. Oh, I could not I could not disagree more. I think John Corshaw has nailed like, the Brigadier's voice in all of the box sets. And he's great here. As a story, The Annihilators is pretty bare bones and basic. The, the closest it gets to complexity is something that we've seen Doctor Who do before, particularly in Galaxy 4. Um, but it is still fun. Like, it's it's a very fun uh, Quatermass-style, Earthbound, uh, alien romp with, you know, Unit and the Third Doctor and Liz. The fundamentals are really solid. And as you heard from the clip, the comedy is on point and the dialogue is sparkling and great as well. And I think that they do get a lot of mileage out of, oh, it's the second it's the second Doctor and Jamie. Ja they get split up quite early on. So it's Jamie with Unit and the Third Doctor. And I think that dynamic is really cool and they get a lot of mileage out of it. Particularly with um, how they kind of tease Jamie and the... Um, and the third doctor meeting up quite uh, quite early on uh, they they tease like oh they're on the phone uh, liz and jamie are on the phone jamie's not talking and liz is like oh doctor there's someone here you have to meet and the third and the third doctor's like not now liz we've got more important things to talk about they they, they have to like try and like kick that uh, the kick the can for that reveal and that confrontation a bit further down the road it's really clever it's, it's quite funny thankfully they don't try and pull that for too long otherwise it might have gotten a bit obnoxious but yeah, the fundamentals are really strong. The cast are great. I think the the performances across the board are really solid. Seven parts, it is a bit long, particularly for how simple the story is when you get right down to it. If this just was a seven part story with the third Doctor, Liz and Unit, I think that it really would have got bogged down. Thankfully, Troughton and Hines do imbue it with a really unique energy. I think that it adds like an extra wrinkle into the story, particularly the cliffhanger that ends part six that goes into part seven. I didn't see it coming. It felt really understated if it, it felt really understated considering the gravity of the cliffhanger um but and they, they, they sort of shrug it off at the beginning beginning of part seven but yeah it was it, it's a good it's a good set i don't think in terms of like a story as a whole it is as good as the unzal incursion or the devil's hoof prints but as like a seven part full story which is like imbuing with like the the third doctor's season seven vibe uh and also just throwing the second doctor in there it does the job okay it's not a must listen but if you have been enjoying the third doctor ranges like i have i think you're going to get a lot out of it especially if you are maybe on the fence about uh, michael troughton taking over as the second doctor and that upcoming box set you, you're kind of killing two birds with one stone here which kind of makes it feel like it's more it, it's 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 like a, a story and a proof of concept i kind of maybe wish that they'd done that with maybe two four-part stories like they've been doing with the past one i think it's just 
even in the behind the scenes, I think this is written by Nicholas Briggs. I think he even said that it was originally meant to be just a six pass and they thought, oh no, let's just add another one because that's what they did in season seven. Let's just add another episode. Uh, and I think that that might have not been the right approach to go for it for the sake of telling the best possible version of this story. I think that maybe if they had a second story with the third Doctor, like, but it's two four-parters, might have been the way to go. And you still could have had the proof of concept for the second Doctor and Jamie and those teasers for the Beyond War Games box set. But we do have another third Doctor Adventures title coming in October 2022. We don't have any sort of story details or anything uh, revolving around that at time of recording this. But the Annihilators was solid. It was a fun, good time. I am I am looking forward to what uh, Michael Troughton and Fraser Hines do in their upcoming box sets for Beyond War Games. Color me excited. It was a a nice subversion, like this, especially the way that they had the initial uh, cover for this without Two and and Jamie, and then like a couple of weeks before release, they dropped the bombshell. That was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, this is all right. This is solid. It's a solid story. Did it need to be seven parts? I don't think it did, but it's still different. It has a different energy to it. It is, uh, it does feel like a different experience from what I've gotten from the past third Doctor box sets, even though it has the same cast, with the exception, of course, of of uh, Troughton and Hines. A Time Lord eight five two says Briggs did say the structure will be different for the next third Doctor volume. That's true. Yeah, in the behind the scenes interview, he said that they're really going to play with the structure for the next one. What does that mean? no idea <laughs> absolutely no idea but I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it all the same like i said up top i think the third doctor adventures has been like an unexpected uh like highlight of the big finish release calendar for me like seven and eight were terrific i need to listen to the other ones as well i need to make my way through them but yeah I, i'm glad that uh, the third doctor has entered 2022 on a high note and for fun he's brought the second doctor and jamie with him that, that's cool i, I like that a lot <laughs> 